Nobody would recognize them if they were on fire on an elevator. You know what I'm saying? And, and it gives them a platform. And that's why I don't answer to stuff like that. People have said bad things of, you know, about me, but I know who I am. I know I'm a good guy. I know I'm a good man. And if somebody has a thing to say about me, go right ahead and say it. I won't give another person any value by answering them. All right, this is Chaz Palmentary. It's Monday. And I'm very excited. I'm always excited when I have my girls with me. My girls, I should say. No. <laughs> my girls. That's what I was that's doing. Right. It's a Chaz Palmentary. And you got to add an apostrophe. And I got to add my an apostrophe. My girls. My girls. That's right. Uh, I want to remind you all, don't forget to come and see my one-man show, ChazPalmentary.net. If you want to know where I'm appearing, John, where am I appearing? So March 23rd, you're going to be in New London, Connecticut at the Guard Arts Center. Yes. April 13th, you're going to be in Clarksburg, Virginia at the Robinson Graham Performing Arts Center. Yes. April 20th, you're going to be in Atlantic City, New Jersey at the Ocean Resort Casino. Atlantic City at the Ocean Resort. AC. AC. And then May 18th, you're going to be in Lancaster, Pennsylvania at the American Music Theater. Fantastic. All right. So um, today, oh, don't forget to come to my restaurants. Uh, 240 uh, Main Street in White Plains and 30 West 46th Street in New York. My White Plains restaurant's got the hottest pizza around, honey pepperoni pizza. Check it out. Catherine, you're going to be in Vegas, I hear. I'm going to be in Vegas. I'm doing a signing and an appearance, and I'm doing the podcast for the Mob Museum, their first ever podcast. So I'll be doing that in April, person. The date, April 18th? Uh, Ma- uh, April 18th. April 18th. You remembered, I didn't yeah. remember, I was like March. And uh, Tara, where are you going to be? April 4th, I'm going to be in Stamford, Connecticut at New York Comedy Club. And then April 7th, I'm at New York Comedy Club, but this one is actually in New York City. So uh, I'd love to see you guys who are local come to those shows. All right. And if they want to know where you put... Uh, Everything is Tara jokes. Tara jokes. You know, you mentioned your restaurant. I went uh, to the city one like two weeks ago. Yeah. And this is what I love about being Italian. I get one with my whole family, and I guess I'm loud. And we other people heard me, and they were talking, and these other people came from Puerto Rico. And all of a sudden, your waiter was so good. I said I was going to give him a shout-out. I got to think your maitre d' that's been there from the beginning. Nicole. Oh, my Nicole. God. They all knew. Who, we had everybody over, came over at a table. We had to move our chairs out. We all sat in the center of the restaurant, this couple from really? Puerto Rico, these other people that were staying in the hotel upstairs, and everybody at the end, like after we had all kind of finished, we all had coffee and after dinner drinks and cake with each other. And the whole restaurant was like communal into my table and we just all hung out and I was like guys is it late they were like no 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 because we were the only people there left they wow. were like no we're open what till time 10. was that it was we, we stayed till like almost 10 o'clock we went my dinner reservation was 5 30 what oh that's great my dinner reservation was at 5 30 and we left like nine almost 10 it's o'clock like at home. night we might as well have been home and all home. these we and we took a whole big picture i'm gonna give it to you john to show on the you know on youtube that's my all, that's my restaurant the Fun. food was excellent everybody was the service was incredible i was so happy oh no the food is delicious it's delicious there. so it was just i have to show you guys the picture it big was shout so out to nicola and, okay. and a That's great, him. you'll get the, I, I have not had a better, what is it? Espresso cor- martini. Oh, yeah. Oh, my, it's like the perfect espresso they martini. They do. They, we make great classic handcrafted drinks there. Great food. Uh, uh, listen. Go uh, there before go the there. theater. Check it out. Before oh, the so theater. Good. We went after. It was so good. And if you see me there, which I'm there quite often, say, mm-hmm. say hello. That's it. So, uh, Catherine, you had a question for us. What is it? I just think this is a cool question, and I don't know why. I just loved it so much. I hope it's And here's good. a question I wanted to ask them, and you can ask yourself, for those of you who are watching. Go ahead. If there was a box with everything in your life that you have lost, lost. and you had this box... What would be the first thing you would look for in that box? Whoa. 
Everything that I have. Everything from childhood to now is it, that is it, you have it, ever lost that meant something to you. A material thing. Is in that box. A, a material, a material thing. thing. Yeah, well, it's not going to be a person in a box. Right. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's also yeah. a hypothetical question. So, I mean, it's not <laughs> right. like it's an actual. It's not based in not reality. Not a coffin. Okay. A box. <laughs> right. Uh, something, yeah, that I lost. Do memories fit in that box? Um, No. Because okay. that's the next and question. A, and so a person, you can't I have another question a, after this. Like you said, you can't miss a person or anything like that. No. no. You found the box with everything in your life that you had lost that meant something to you. Something tangible. Yeah, I would say, I would have to say. Could even be a toy you had as a kid. No, I would have to say there was this cross that I bought my wife in the very beginning. I was just starting to make a lot of money at the time. Uh, back in 92, and I, um, I bought her. We were in Venice together, and I bought her this beautiful cross with diamonds and rubies. It was just really a gorgeous cross, and I loved it, and, uh, and it was expensive back then. This is 30-something years ago, and I, um, we had it, and then there was a woman who was our uh, housekeeper at the time, and I really liked her a lot, and I would buy her daughter gifts and everything. And uh, then one day she didn't show up anymore. I was like, what, what happened to her? And then the police came about three days later and said to me, they gave me her name, I don't want to say her name. And they said, yeah, she stole a lot of things from a lot of people. Is she, uh, did you check your stuff? And I went, well, no, we didn't think we had to. We went upstairs, we looked in the jewelry box and she- That was gone. She stole the so cross. So the cross. I would say that cross. Oh, that's beautiful. I would beautiful. like to have give that to my wife because Aww. that meant a lot to me. Because you can't get it. The guy made it yes. for us. Anyway. Sentimental. I would, sentimental, yeah. What about you, Tara? Uh, God, I think I remember as a kid, I had a, a ring that my godfather had bought me. Um, and I was young. I was in elementary school. And I remember, so I was so old? proud of it. How old were you? Oh, man, maybe first grade or really Aww. young. And I remember it was the first time I had something sentimental as a kid. And I, my, my uncle had moved away. And I was, you know, you know, just, I guess I didn't understand much as a kid. And I was so proud that I had something of him. And then I remember I was in school. And I remember leaving school and looking down and realizing that I lost the ring. And it was the first time I actually ever probably remember feeling like losing something with a sentimental value. Yeah. Sentimental. It's always it sentimental. It was a sentimental. I, I, if you priced out the ring today, God, probably nothing. But I remember feeling so disappointed in myself that I had something that was special and I wasn't responsible enough to keep it. Like I felt that pressure. Wow. And that was my first real lesson. Wow. And I think I would just, I would want, I mean... He has since passed, and but I, I would want that ring. Uh, How about you? Wonder you? where it is. Me? Well, yeah. Uh, well, this is gonna be funny, but I would want to find my favorite dress. I had this dress, and I'll never forget it. I remember how it felt and everything. But the special thing about this dress, it was brown and white, and and it was striped. Mm. And it had glasses, it's sunglasses attached to it. And <laughs> really? I thought I was as cool as shit. And I'll never forget when I put it on, I'll never forget my mother had did my hair with those ribbons and I had chocolate brown ribbons and I thought I looked so pretty. And I put the glasses on that were attached to it and I want that fucking dress. Excuse my French, I want that dress so bad. Mm. Do you have a picture of you in that? No. Wow. I I, uh, I have a question. Yeah. I think, yeah, let's do these question things. And whoever wants to answer first, if you could go, if you could go back right now, if somebody said to you, I'm going to give you one wish, but it has to be something that you didn't do you when you were young that you could do right now, what would that be, you think? Oh, so a regret that you... Sh you a regret. You have one, just one regret. You have any regrets that you could fulfill? Any regrets at all? Yeah. What's the regret? I wouldn't have left my mother the day she died. I wouldn't have left home. I regret that I got up and I went to work. I wish I didn't leave because then I came home and I found her dead. Boy, 
All right, I got to go lay down after that one. <laughs> no, but I mean, that's what I regretted. That day, I would never leave my house. Okay, but say you didn't leave. Would, would it, you, you probably I would. think I would have said, Ma, you know, I left and my mother was sleeping. I thought. I think I left. Because she thought she was and sleeping. I think I left my mother, passed away, and went to work a whole day, came back, because she never moved from the position. Wow. So. Is yeah. there peace? But no, no, no. I'm lying. She had to move because then the door was locked and we had to break the door down. So the door could only be locked from the end of that. She did get up, but yeah. I mean, I just wish I wouldn't have left the house. Yeah. I would have been there to save her. You think you could save her? Do you feel her? that was yeah. a, but she died it wasn't, of natural it was a heart causes, attack, right? no? No, but I think that, you know, I she woke up in the middle of the night when she had her first heart attack and tapped me. I called an ambulance and saved her. They came, they gave uh. her, you know. I feel like she could have been saved. Maybe. You don't know that. I mean, you don't feel, shouldn't be regretful for that. You don't know. Yeah. How about you? Uh, I mean, compared to that. One regret? It's nothing, could be, anything compared to that. Is, you know how I, I, I think as I get older, I have a whole new perspective on regrets. And I feel like I, I'm, I, I want to believe that everything I shouldn't have done prior to today or anything I would regret prior to today led me to where I am. Yeah. So my success now is because I failed prior or my relationship now is as healthy because I had so many bad ones. So I kind of like to look at it like I cannot rewrite the past. Mm. And I would like and I don't want to be ashamed of my younger self or poor choices that I've made. Instead, I want to say to that young girl, like you made mistakes and you'll get through them and you'll learn from them and you'll become better because of them. So I think a lot of my regrets made me better because I reflected and I didn't want to make the same mistakes again. And I think that that's why I'm where I am today. Yeah. Well, what pretty, about you? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much what, what, what Tara said. I don't, no regrets at all? <sighs> I mean, come on. I, you know what? Sometimes, you gotta change one sometimes change I one think I, I wish I, w- I would have went to college. Right. Like a big time college. I went to college, but it was a community college. I wish I would have tried, but who knows if I would have got into a big time college, to be honest with you. I didn't have the marks, really, but I've always, I, I see it now, my kids, and wow, it's so exciting when I watch right. them go to college. That was the one thing that initially I was going to say, but when Catherine yeah. came out with such something so real, like. But you went to college. No, 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 to go away. I didn't go away to college, yeah, oh. and I that was going to be my regret, where I didn't study yeah. abroad. But you know what? I make up for it now with vacations, yeah, and I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I make. But I do wish I wasn't so stuck in the neighborhood as mm. I was. So you know, limited, you know, yeah. thinking, and that I would have went away to college. Well, these are good questions. Yeah. Well, anybody else have a question? I have another question. Go ahead. If you were in a room full of people. Mm. From your past, dead or alive, who would you look for? Oh, I, for me, that's easy. I, I would look for my three people, my mother, my father, and my friend Phil, who's behind me. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Those three. Who's why I'm sitting here. I would look for, uh, yes. And, and you? I'd look for my, my grandfather and my, my grandmother. Yeah, I'd look for my grandparents, my great-grandmother, and my the two people who I felt taught me um, unconditional love was my grandfather, my mother's father, and then his mother, my great-grandmother. Those were probably my two caretakers because my mom was young and divorced mm-hmm. and I was always in their care. So I, I would, I would, I yearned for that. Mm-hmm. I yearned for that. You know, even no matter how old you are, you still want that feeling of being taken care of. So I think that those are the people I would look for. You? My mother and father. Your mother and father, yes. And my daughter's father. And your daughter's father. Well, this podcast is <laughs> going in the toilet. <laughs> well, we just... I'm gonna, I got to go lay down, This man. is a deflated I'm, bull. I'm oh, going to switch man. it up with something... Man. I'm going to switch it up with something real out of the box. Uh, go ahead. So please, please, help us. Help so us. I got a text yesterday. I got a text a couple weeks ago from Kitty. She said, you're never going to believe what happened. I... Broke my, you fractured your ankle, right? You, I broke my you foot. Broke oh, a, a foot. Six weeks ago. Six you weeks ago. It. Then we're sitting here down to do this podcast, and she 
put her chair on Chaz's foot and sat on his foot. Oh. Sorry. So I'm keeping my feet. I have feet. ice on it right now. I'm keeping my feet over here. Don't mind my slippers. I'm keeping my feet over here because I'm not just following the trend. John, be careful. People, you could lose a foot. You do this podcast, you could lose a foot. You can. But you can. this is what I will say about feet because of the topic. So I went to dinner a week ago uh, with, uh, with the, I won't mention her name because I don't know if she wants me to mention her name. She's a, a news broadcaster. And she was talking about something called wiki feet. And I go, well, what's that? She goes, well, you've heard of Wikipedia, right? I'm like, yeah, everybody, you know, you can look up anybody on Wikipedia. And she said, well, there is a, there is something called wiki feet where they have pictures of celebrity feet. And I said, oh my God, that's so crazy. She goes, you just type in the person's name and pictures of their feet come up. She goes, have you ever looked to see if you're on it? And I go, no, I never even heard of it. I go, I'm not going to be on that. Nobody's looking at my feet. I know we've talked about people asking me for pictures of my feet for money, but that's a whole other topic. But I go, I'm not on that. She goes, well, let's just look. And she takes out her phone and she puts wikifeet.com, types in my name, and the minute you put Tara C, boom, I see my name pop up and my stomach drops. And I'm like, what is this? It's not just, it's not people who've gone around the city taking pictures of your feet. If you've posted a picture, we all have social media. I don't know when I'm posting a picture of my, if I'm in a bikini, you know, if I'm in a Maybe bathing on suit, beach. on a beach, in, in open toe shoes. There I am. Pictures of me, pictures of me with my mother-in-law, pictures of me with my family. So I go, oh my God, this is crazy. And then I said, let me look up and see if Catherine's on it. And then boop, you punch in Catherine's name. And uh, Catherine's on Wiki Feet. Did I have a pedicure at least? I mean, she's on Wiki Feet too. Yeah, John, are you looking it up? Holy shit! I'm gonna look it up. I'm not gonna post the picture. I though. only oh. hope to God I had a pedicure. I but, mean it. I mean, we know. <laughs> I don't want all crepity feet. That maybe I let it go. Well, a you bit. posted the picture, so I, I think it's only. Yeah, but I didn't post it for you to go. I know. On my feet. What do we? I mean, is this not a weird? This site looks like a MySpace page. It's. I really? could not it's believe. It's so outdated. Wow, that's weird. Yeah, the, but feet are a real thing. People have fetishes. So people got fetishes. Yeah. Well, people, feet. you know, fetishes are crazy. If if you think about it, fetishes. There are things of fetishes that you go. How is that a fetish? I've seen fetishes where, you know, um, I dated a girl once, and she was. Um, uh, I didn't know it at the time, but uh, then she confessed later because I, see, I would see her go out all the time. Dominatrix. She was a dominatrix. And I said to her, but she, we had a very open relationship, but it was great. So How I said, old were you? Oh, let's see. I was maybe about 31. Okay. Well, you know, like that. And I said to her, I said, uh, uh, you got to tell me about some of the things. And she said, oh, I'm embarrassed. I said, you're embarrassed? Come on, you can't be embarrassed. Because I seen her leaving with a suitcase sometimes because I, I waited outside the apartment one night and I was sitting in my car and I saw her walk out with a suitcase. And then I asked her, what, what's going on? And she told me, she was very honest. And she said that a guy, uh, he was uh, this guy and she would skate around him in, in uh, roller skates. And he would stand, he would sit in a chair tied up with duct tape and he would watch her go around and around with roller skates, and he would say, why can't I fuck you? Why can't I fuck you? And that was it. And never had the sex, actually? Never had the sex, no. God, uh, <laughs> because I think people like to feel shame. That's like a real thing, right? Like uh, yes. the fetish is not only for shame. No, but no, but that's yeah. one aspect of it. No, you want to so, feel like right. you can't. Like people want to be talked down to. People want to, you know, they don't I want I mean, I was so I'm taken sure by they, it that I, I put it in a play. You know, I was like, oh, I got to put that in a play. And I'm sure that he handled himself after she left thinking about it, right? Like that's the whole point. Yeah, that was it. You know, she would say guys would just sing to her and then while well, they're masturbating and then. And she would say, okay. And then at the end of the song, she would leave. I would say, well, shit, that's not a bad gig. That's a weird, <laughs> I had the weirdest fetish I ever heard of was a guy that liked to be wrapped up in tin foil, like keep putting the tin foil around him until he was wrapped and then just keep crinkling it. <laughs> that sounds <laughs> fun. <laughs> fun? <laughs> John? John, I'm to concerned. To be the one crinkling it. Yeah, just... Like, play right. with it. Play with the tin foil on his body. But the funniest one she ever told me was, he was a, uh, uh, should I, could I, could I, I'm going to say it, but then tell me if we should leave it. 
He was an acidic Jew. Okay. So I, could I say that? Yeah. And he would lay on the floor, would clo- fully clothed, and she would walk and, and she would wait, and she would come out dressed in leather and stuff. But, be, but then she would stare at him, and he kept going. He'd sing this thing going, my old, my old, my old. And she would go louder. And he would go, my old, my old, my old, louder, louder. And he would go, my old, my old. And then she would walk over to him, put her heel next to his mouth, and he would go, and she goes, sing it. And he would go, my old Kentucky home. No, what? He would sing my old Kentucky home (laughs) and get off. But was he touching himself? Oh, yeah. My old Kentucky home? What the fuck? Is that? Yeah, th- th- it's the weirdest thing. I mean, the human mind fascinates me. You know what it is? I too. I think we know about so many weird fetishes now because of like yeah, the internet. The internet, like right. before, these people. I don't know. They had underground worlds. It right. was easier. Now it's like I, now now they're having like conferences and and hotels. Well, it's and, any, anything you have a fetish for, you go on the internet. Yeah, you have. There are other people that have your fetish. Okay, I have a question. My next question, could I yeah. ask? Yeah. My next question to you guys, would you like to hear one day, social media is going down, there's no more, that's it. Yes. Done. Yes. We're back to reset to yes. where we were. Yes. It's causing too many problems. I think so. I think um, social media is, I think it, it does, it's very good in a way, but it, I think it, it did a lot of harm. It made everybody, it made so many bullies in the world. People who are just, they don't put their name on things. Everybody's a critic. Everybody could say anything about anyone. It's hurtful. I think the te- I think it's hurt the young people the most. Yes. And I, so Snoop Dogg know. said that, I think it was him. Oh, I hope it was him. I think, I think it was him. I hope I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong. But I, somebody, one celebrity said, if you took social media down, who, like all these influencers, like, where would they go? What would they be they would have without to, it? They would have to get a real But if actors, real actors, you'd still see them on the screen mm-hmm. and TV. Real comics would still have shows. Yeah, I think it's yeah. taking, I mean, it's giving talentless people a platform, which yes. bothers the hell out of me. Yeah. me it's too. giving talentless people judging your talent. And that's the worst thing about it is. Oh, wow. Talentless people judging your talent. Yeah. You mean like the keyboard warriors that come on and... I don't know who that is, but it's just... You know, people that say all the things, oh, yeah. mean things, like, uh, Chaz, you can't, you know, act your way out of a paper bag. Absolutely, or- yeah. I mean, people who just, uh, you know, they couldn't fill up an elevator. You know, <laughs> uh, you know, I always say that. Nobody would recognize them if they want fire on an elevator. You know what I'm saying? And, and it gives them a platform. And that's why I don't answer to stuff like that. People have said bad things of you know about me but i know who i am i know i'm a good guy i know i'm a good man and if somebody has a thing to say about me go right ahead and say it i won't give another person any value by answering him or answering her i won't do it so if you want to say something bad about me it's okay i wish you well you know what i do about people who say things bad about me i say to them i wish you the life you have yeah, That's that was powerful. Say. We talked about that. That's what I say. Because yeah. if you're that angry and upset and depressed, I don't want any part of that shit. I hope you'll be better one day. And, you know, because my life is beautiful. My life, uh, I've been, I thank God every day about my life. So whoever it may be, guy, girl, I don't care. If you, you know, you say anything bad about me or my family, you know what? I'm not going to wish anything bad on you. You know, it's like wishing bad things on people. That's like drinking poison and hoping that you die. Why do I want that poison inside of me? You know what? My gift to you is I don't accept your gift of negativity. That gift stays with you. You be bitter and angry and look at your own life what it is. And you know what? That's okay for me. I wish you the life you have. Anyway, I don't know where I got off on that one. but No, it's, yeah. yeah. Social it's, media question. Ty, what about you? I really social media has given me so much anxiety. You get b- bothered by people they say I used to get so affected. Now I don't. No, I, you don't. I, right. I mean I still respond to people and sometimes I can't help myself I don't because respond. um I can be very articulate and I can use that and not such a great way to respond to people. Um but 
I I am much better about it this year, especially, you know, like you said, I focus on all the positive and the people that come to my shows and the love I've been receiving lately. It's so it's so much more than the negativity that I'm really able to block it out. But yeah. with social media itself, like, listen, yay or nay? I, I really, I, I'm in a, I'm in a nay be, because of how much anxiety it has given me. And oh my God, and you need to have a certain amount of followers and this, this and that. And every, every post, I overthink things. So when you're somebody like me who overthinks every single thing you say, do right, it could really cause extra angst. But do I say, it's become a platform for people who are also really talented that now have a you know a platform to show their stuff. Has it been a way for people to communicate and connect yeah. with certain people? Yes, I think there have been posit- positive parts about it. I just wish it was a lim- limited capacity on certain things you can do with it. I wish there was a limited capacity of how long we could be on our phones. I wish there was more screening or better screenings for children. or Because I, I was getting affected by the bullies, right? How, how are our children who don't know who they are yet? There are young kids who've killed themselves because of things that have been said to them from cyberbullying. Mm. Like, I was affected, you know, my age, knowing who I am, and I had to find ways to, to, to manage it. So it's like, I just wish there were, there were better boundaries on it. I, I, I wish that it never existed, honestly. And I just do. I like, I don't, I feel like, including myself, there's no mystery to anyone. There's no mystery. I remember when I was, before social media, I was always interested to go buy a newspaper or like the rag magazines to see what all my favorite actors were doing to read about it. And they stayed mysterious. Now we see every piss and shit everybody takes. I'm drinking this new water. I'm doing my makeup. there's no mystery. We know everything about you, so it's not special anymore. That's one. And two, um, I just feel like, I don't know. As you said, it's good for the people. Like, mm-hmm. I see a lot of talented cooks mm-hmm. and a lot mm-hmm. of talented, you know, I learn a lot about nutrition and these people who are doctors that come on. But all in all, I yeah. wish it never existed. Yeah, I would say during the pandemic, it was great for that level of having something, a platform yeah. for people to communicate and or I'm entertain. I'm a thinker. I like yeah. technology. And yeah, I, me too. Know, I mean, I enjoy this platform. But that there's we something have, really, right. there's yeah, yeah. something really awful about it. Like something really, really, really awful that, and something wonderful and something awful. And yeah. I think the bad part sometimes takes over the. Good I think part. it's made so many inflated egos, like people oh. who think they are the most interesting people in the world. If some some of these videos you watch, you're like, I, I don't even want to, I wish that this didn't even hit my screen today, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah I, I believe that uh, we, in our podcast, we never talk negative or bad about people. Never, because why? Because here's the bottom line, and I wrote a movie about this. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody really cares. So what are you getting upset for? Why are you getting anxiety? Uh-huh. Right, Why? Right. Why? You, in, did you ever get upset when somebody said never. something? Never. Nothing. No. He, he's that. Nothing. That I believe of him. No. Yeah. I believe you. it, but yeah, I, yeah. I'm telling you the truth. I I laugh at that. When somebody says something negative about me, I laugh at it. I go, all right. But you don't. You know why I laugh at it? Because you don't know me. Mm-hmm. They don't really know you. You don't really know yeah. me. Yeah. So how could you say something about me? Yeah. You don't know me, mm-hmm. whoever you are. You don't know me. If you knew me, you would feel differently. Because I wish you well. I wish everybody well. So why be negative? Nobody cares. Think about it. Think about it. Like you said, you know your grandparents, right? Mm -hmm. You knew them very well, Mm -hmm. right? Do you know their parents? Did you know their parents? Well, I was of a generation where everybody got married young. No, not my. I don't know my great grandparents. You know your great. Do you know your great grandparents? No. Do you know your grand your grandparents? My grandparents. You know your great grandparents. No. You know you you know your great great grandparents. No. One day we all will be great great parents. Who gives a shit? <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody, Nobody cares. cares. <laughs> I care. No, nobody cares. Nobody cares. One day we will be great, great parents, and don't forget about all of us. You got it? I'm still trying to be a parent. Right. Nobody gives a shit. So enjoy your life and forget it. It's all bullshit. What matters is moments. At the end of your life, you got more great moments than bad moments. That's it. 
you have your wife, your, your, your kids, your family, your friends that are close to you. That's it. That's it. Nobody cares. Okay, with that, we're going to end this and say, hey, this was fun. Yeah, we, I, yeah. I, I, lo- I love when the girls are here because we always have great... These podcasts are moments for me. Yes, great. And, uh, and again, if anybody says anything bad about you out there, whoever you are on the, inter- on the internet, ignore it. It means nothing. Yeah. Zero. Nothing. Play this for your kids. Play it for your kids, especially your young kids. Wish them the life they have. If they want to be bitter and angry, whether it's a male or female, let them have their life. Who cares about it? God bless you all. We'll see you next week.